Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. We're here in the church today because our little All Saints Chapel is being repainted. So everything's out of there. So it's kind of nice to be in the chancel area here. Very appropriate. Let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue, and bring to completion every good intent, that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the 14th Sunday after Pentecost is from Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord your God, that the Lord the God of your Father is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it. You may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Keep them and do them. For that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who when they hear all this, these statutes will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I said before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and to your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson is from Ephesians chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we did not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And the gospel reading is from Mark 7, 14 to 23. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. When he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart but his stomach and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs> well, this week I'm preaching. We're going to have the church picnic as long as it doesn't rain. The rains will be here at church at 10 o'clock, but plan on church at 10 o'clock at Kiwanis Park, and then we will have Monday night service as well. But I thought, uh, thinking we're outside, and I thought I'd start by talking about ash trees, and we know what's happening with the ash trees all around us. There's actually um, 
The estimates of the total number of ash trees in the United States range between seven and nine billion trees. And we all know that the emerald ash borer has invaded, actually it apparently came from China, uh, of all things, right? <laughs> Why not? Everything else seems to come from there. Um, and it came into Detroit. And now uh, in the Michigan area, there's like 40 million trees that have been destroyed and tens of millions of ash trees have been destroyed uh, throughout our country and in, in Canada. And this beetle is like the size of a dime. That's how small it is. And what I thought I'd talk about is how all of us have been afflicted with original sin, right? The beetle of our sin uh, has destroyed the tree of our lives, if you will, so that nothing good comes out of us. We, uh, the fruit we bear uh, is disease fruit. And Jesus talks about that when he says, out of the heart comes murder, theft, adultery. And notice how in our culture and in our world, everybody says, look within, you know, look within your heart. Uh, if you believe in yourself, you can do anything. Now we're, we're the disease tree, right? We, um, the wages of sin is, is death. And if as you look around our landscape, uh, drive down 43, and it's really sad, right, to see all the dead trees. I started thinking about that uh, and the mess that we have in our world today and the death that surrounds us. You think of Afghanistan with what's going on there and Haiti, and uh, we think about uh, the, the destruction of humanity within families even, you know, where one can take their own child. You know, the evil is within, destroying even um, your own flesh and blood. That's where we are. So we need help, and our help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And it comes from the good tree, the only good tree, the only good human being who is Jesus Christ. He Only God is good, and he came into our world to take on our flesh and blood in order to redeem it, to make us good. So the good tree of the cross bears fruit. On that tree, Jesus won salvation for all the world. And now, uh, with these gifts that seem so tiny, maybe like the size of a dime or a little quarter, I guess, with uh, our Lord's body and a uh, little sip of his blood, we receive our redemption. We're given the fruit of his life, his forgiveness, his goodness, his life that conquers death. So it's the antidote to our sin and death. So we come every Lord's Day to partake of the fruit of this tree of the cross, his word and uh, his body and blood. And as a result, we're transformed and we bear fruit of the spirit, right? Which is love, joy, peace, patience, self-control, and, and, and so forth. So that's where I'm going with this. I don't know if you want to pick up on it. Yeah, I, I like that a lot. Um, I was thinking of the book uh, written by the Swedish bishop by the name of Bo Geertz, The Hammer of God. And uh, Bo Geertz talks about uh, his life, or the life of the character in the book, with young pastors as he's dealing with them. And one of the pastors was teaching synergism, which means that I, I give my heart to Jesus and that I help God complete my salvation, which is false doctrine. It's by grace alone, through faith in Jesus Christ. It's God's doing, not ours. And he was talking with this old bishop and said, I'm going to give my heart to Jesus. And he sat back and he said, well, this is the way it is, my young friend. He said, your heart is like a rusty old tin can on a junk heap. Certainly a fine gift for the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the way it is. Our Lord comes by and he picks up that rusty old tin can and recreates it and gives it life. Um, through obviously through Christ is the only way that we receive that that life and forgiveness and salvation. That our heart is a rusty old tin can of a junkie, or an old dead tree in the middle of the forest. And God in Christ creates a new heart. He gives us the heart of Christ. He gives us the life of Christ. And notice how you know that analogy: a tin can is dead. He makes us alive, and we're alive in Christ. I don't know if you want to pick up on anything with that. Well, it reminds me of the hymn, The Tree of Life, by Stephen Starkey, mm -hmm. which we're not going to be singing this coming Sunday, uh, but it, it talks about how the, you know, the tree of uh, 
that was in the garden that uh, became death for Adam and Eve and for us too, uh, and then compares that with the tree of the cross, uh, which is uh, for gives life to everyone uh, who looks to that cross. Um, and one of the hymns we are singing is By Grace I'm Saved, which talks about um, what you were talking about, Pastor Bird, about um, there's nothing by our own merit uh, that we... Uh, that, that we are granted forgiveness of sins. Um, and it's an interesting hymn because there are a series of questions in the hymns. So there'll be a question and then the answer comes right after it. So it's, it's kind of uh, a, makes it a new way of looking at things. Um, so if you look at verse three, this is 566 in the Lutheran service book. Uh, verse three says, by grace, God's son, our only savior came down to earth to bear our sin. Was it because of your own merit that Jesus died? your soul to win. No, it was grace and grace alone that brought him from his heavenly throne. And that happens a couple times throughout the verses. It gives a question and then, then the answer. Um, yeah. it's, it's interesting how we tend to minimize sin and that it's no big deal. And I come back, and that's why I was thinking about that ash borer. It's only the size of a dime. And look at the destruction. Look at what it's done. I mean, in the same thing with, um, you think of a COVID-19 virus or any virus, right? We can't even see it. And, and yet it causes death and destruction. Nothing good comes from us. It comes from God. Only God is good. And the, the great thing is that God took on our humanity um, and uh, became the tree, if you will, of life for us through the forgiveness of sins that he won in his suffering, death, and resurrection. So it is by grace that I'm saved. Um, through faith, and faith is, isn't a doing word, it's a receiving word. We simply receive the gifts. He leaves nothing to us, like I like to say, it's, or we mess it up. Um, and even in the giving of the gift, he gives it by his spirit at work through his word. And we receive it and rejoice in the new life that he brings. There's a great piece of artwork that shows the, um, I think it's Senfo who painted it, but it gives a picture of the tree in the center the one that leads to death and destruction, it kind of shows the landscape. And then the other side shows the gospel oh, and yeah. the, the life and the blessings that it brings. I'll see if we can get that. Yeah, that sounds good. Let's read that. Well, should we sing it? Yes. Yeah. Let's sing By Grace I'm Saved, and we'll sing verse 2. Bring some of those themes together. Great. By grace of daily claim to merit, our works and conduct have no worth. God in his love sent our Redeemer, Christ Jesus to this sinful earth. His death did for our sins atone, and we are saved by grace alone. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.